So this is from uh, one, two, three. Uh, this is when I was a three. This is two years ago, 2018, at Simon Supercrit. Uh, I th believe it's put on by, or would have been put on by BFF this year. Uh, obviously it's not because racing didn't happen this year, uh, if you're smart. But uh, this is a pretty simple course, not super technical, wide open. It's a motorcycle course, uh, motorcycle racetrack. Um, so let's see, full disclosure, I have not watched this before, so I don't know if I race that well, but that's kind of the fun in it, right? Let's critique what happens. This is much shorter because it's, uh, I put music to it. So pretty good starting position here overall. This was the year, 2018, when I had pretty good fitness. I won a couple of races, won the state championship. So my fitness here, I think the, the following weekend is the first race of the year that I won, or maybe two weeks after this. Uh, start here, pretty good start. Could be on a wheel, but obviously we're not really going that hard. Okay, and there's a flyer. This is a smart move, just sitting on the wheels. Kind of far back here. Um, also, again, not on a wheel. Uh, may have just come back from trying to make like a breakaway effort, right? But um, I should be trying to push in for a wheel. So I finally get on a wheel here, uh, which allows me to chill a little bit. You can see, like, my watts went from, like, what, 400, 500 to, to mid-200s. So this is a good move. Uh, if I remember correctly, the wind was coming from this direction, uh, from the right. So we have the wind coming this way. So I am moving up into the wind, which is not great, but I am moving up significantly. You can see the... the I went from like probably in the 20s to, to top 10 here and there's this move on the left that is starting to go and if if I am smart I'll take this gap even though it's into the wind because what that will allow me to do is get up onto this move here and then sit on the move and, and save, an, save some of my effort uh, and recover a little bit so let's see what happens. Okay, so I kind of come up the side there. There we go. It should have been that effort from like as soon as I shot that gap. This is Tim Strelecki here, super strong rider. Um, if I can get up to this and and make some moves, that that's a good break. Obviously, it didn't happen. Uh, hold on, let's go back there. Okay, so I'm on this wheel. Uh, this might be Jared Olam uh, from First Internet Bank. Super nice guy, incredibly strong rider. Um, but I come off the wheel here in a second uh, because he kind of pulls away and I'm, I'm left with a couple choices. Right? I could go here and, and just sit on this wheel. Um, I could hop on Jarrett's wheel um, and make a bigger effort, which I'm already at 630 watts, so my effort is already pretty high. Or I can kind of shoot this gap and get on any of these wheels. I could get on John's wheel. I could try and make it up here if I was really uh, feeling it. Uh, let's watch what happens again. So again, I, my power jumps up to 900. At this point, I, I really should have put tried to push Jared off this wheel or gotten into this gap. But I get on Jared's wheel, uh, which is reasonable enough. A uh, little bit of too big of a gap there. Uh, if I was trying to make a breakaway effort there, it was not strong enough. These two riders come by on my left, um, which I may have been kind of anticipating, and I should jump on this wheel right here. 
and I don't. So it looks like I'm trying maybe, uh, but I'm definitely not putting out enough power to get up to that wheel fast. And so now I'm stuck out in the wind uh, trying to get onto the wheel. Uh, this is Jake, comes by, fills in the gap. I'm still not on the wheel totally, but it looks like the group slows down. Um, I would anticipate here just by his body language and the way he's riding that Jake would try and take off because these two guys just attacked and it would be a great time for him to attack. I don't know if this guy is off the front or off the back. Um, if he's off the front, that's even better for Jake because he can make it up there and then they can work together. Um, and he does. He doesn't put in a huge, strong attack there, but you can see he just kind of rides through, which is more than reasonable. If nobody on the front is going to hop on his wheel, that's enough to get away. There's another attack. I think this is Carlos. This is a decent move sitting in. I should have been faster there if I wanted to get on that. Right now I'm just kind of, you know, moving up the field. This is Ross. I get on Ross's wheel here. Okay, this is okay. Still a little bit far behind. I really need to be up in there better. Ross, I don't know what was going on there. There's an attack. Sitting in the group here. This is fine. I think I saw this attack or this bridge attempt and I wanted to get up there so I make a uh, make a decent effort. I slot in. I should slot in. Should have slotted in right there. Obviously I don't because again why would I do anything that makes sense right? Um, instead it looks like I'm gonna slot in behind this guy and I don't quite get on the wheel. So again, you can see, even still, this is, what, three years later, I, I'm still leaving some room where I, I can make this up. Again, this is something that comes with time. Uh, you get better and better at it and more and more comfortable with it as you go on. So a little bit of contact there. Everybody handled themselves pretty nicely. can see just how much tighter packed this group is than like the Cat 4 race was. Good position here. Um, not sure what lap this is. I'm on wheels. There is still a little bit of space in front of me. Okay, this is the final sprint it looks like. So if I'm remembering correctly, this is Igor here. Okay. Um, so my choices in this sprint are follow Igor follow Jarrett, follow Tim, or follow this Burnham rider, right? Like I have these four choices. Take a minute. I choose to follow Tim. Let's, let's slow this down a little bit. Let's do half. So I choose to follow Tim here in the white. I know he's a strong rider. I know he can finish strong. And I felt like it was a good wheel to follow. So as we do this, you can see that Jarrett gets kind of boxed in. He manages to move left. Now here, again, I can follow Tim. I'm still not quite behind him. I can follow Igor or Jarrett. So Igor goes left. He's got a teammate here, so he can set up a decent lead out. We're still a decent chunk away from the finish line. Here's the real thing. I sh what I should have done is made my way over to Igor's wheel. Instead, I stay right. And I follow Jared. Jared gets boxed in here, kind of. And so what I have to do is now, again, I have this choice. I can go this way, which is not great because there's the wall there, or I can follow Jared. If you look, 
back up a little bit more. If you look, here's Igor again. Let's watch Igor. Look at that. He just makes it through all of this traffic, no problem. And now he's sitting pretty like fifth wheel and he just opens it up. Jarrett had to come all the way around. Watch all these people he has to come around. Like five riders he has to come around to even try and make an effort to sprint. And so I just get stuck here in the middle doing nothing, right? And Jarrett's strong enough where he can make a pretty good effort and still have a decent result. But if you look, Igor or whoever was whoever that was in Triple X just had such an opening that it was no contest. So made some some poor decisions at the end there, um, but overall better racing. You can see there was much of an improvement. Obviously, you're not going to have much braking on this course unless somebody's checking you, um, but still some improvement for things like drafting. So you can see that there was marked improvement in my ability to race my bike, you know, over three years, which you would hope if you're continually racing. I would say from 2018 till now, I'm even better racer than I was. I mean, kind of evidenced by my results and my, my, my upgrade, right? You would hope. Um, but overall, like, I hope that this helps you guys. I hope that, th that you can see the, the changes and the improvements that you can make and you start to think about your own uh, races and, and your own, the mistakes that you've made. One of the big things that I noticed when I started recording my videos um, and, and posting them to YouTube was as I was editing them, I get to see the mistakes that I made and I get to see the things that I'm doing right and the things that I'm doing wrong which is big when you can go back and you look at what you're doing, you can uh, try and make changes. And so it's really important, I think, and a valuable tool if you're able to record your races to do it. You don't even have to do anything with the footage, just like record it, go back and watch it once or twice and, and take a look at it, send it to a friend, have them take a look at it. But just going back and reviewing it it's just like any other sport right baseball football you go back and you watch what you did what you did right and what you did wrong and you look at how you can improve yeah chris less suck as uh less suck over time is important uh it's very very valuable so I hope that was helpful for you guys. I hope that looking at this footage is, is something that you're interested in. If it's not, let me know. Uh, if you're on YouTube and you're watching, let me know in the comments, let me know in the chat. Um, if you enjoyed looking at like training peaks analysis of races, we can. I would be happy to do that more often. Let me know what you wanna see. Uh, obviously Zwift rides are something that is totally possible but let me know what you like let me know what you would want to see if you want to see me do stuff to my bike or talk about the bikes in general uh, whatever uh, thank you guys for watching uh, if you're on YouTube again let me know what you like to see and thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time